Yesterday, Expedition League launched. And I have to say, I was impressed. It is one of the smoothest League launches I have ever experienced. I never disconnected once. The queue went down incredibly quickly. There was barely any lag. There were some micro stutters. They were very annoying. I thought it was my computer because when I stream, especially when Delirium is active, I do get micro stutters, unfortunately, just because PoE likes to overload my CPU. It's a bit older and not the best for the game. However, in the end, it was smooth, and even those micro stutters ended up clearing up about eight hours in. So congratulations to GGG. This has been one of the smoothest league launches I've experienced in a very long time. Before I get into the rest of the video, I want to talk about my absolute favorite thing about Expedition. It's something that I was not expecting, did not know I'd fall in love with, and it is amazing. And that is the new Brutus fight. It caught me totally by surprise. I was like, I'm going to go into the Warden's room. Before I do, I'm going to drop a portal. I'm going to go back. I'm going to upgrade my flasks. This will be easy. And then he attacked me before I even got to the room. I was not prepared at all. I hadn't upgraded my flasks, and it felt like a real fight. It was awesome. I love to see it. I love the aesthetic of him crashing through walls. It feels way more cinematic. I'm sure a lot of new players are going to get drawn into the game more by this level of immersion. It's great. Again, huge props to GGG for that. I know it's a small thing. It's relatively small in the grand scheme of things, but I love it. So now on to the rest of the video with my thoughts on my build, the successes I've had so far, and the league as a whole. Now I will have a POB for my day one gear down below. In the footage, my gearing levels are going to vary. Some of it is from my leveling experience, some of it is from my early mapping when I was on two 4-links, and some of it is going to be from when I switched to my 5-link ballista 4-link clear setup. The main difference between the POB and what I'm actually doing is I didn't end up buying a Quill Rain. Quill Rain was 3 or 4 chaos very early on, and the price just kept climbing, so it didn't really feel worth it to me when, if I was going to spend 6 chaos anyway, I might as well get a 5-link plus 2 bow. It means my clear skill won't attack as quickly, it means I won't get back the mana on hit, but it also means that my ballistas will do way more damage. So that's what I ended up going with. It was inexpensive, I think it was 5 chaos, I don't remember now. And after a couple chromes to recolor it, I was good to go and zooming through maps. My damage in maps has felt great. This is largely an effect of the ballistas getting minimally nerfed and efficacy supports buff largely making up for a lot of the nerfs to Toxic Rain if you're using Ballistas. Big caveat here, if you are using self-attack, you will feel the nerfs a little bit more, because you don't get the multiplicative effect of putting down multiple Ballistas and just running around. And speaking of that, it's felt great. It feels really nice to play a skill that just lets me run around. I don't have to actively worry about attacking a specific thing. I can just focus on mechanics and dodging things. I will say the Ballistas are not always the best at targeting down the most important monster. Sometimes they'll kill adds instead of something dangerous that keeps respawning them. This is a little bit annoying. My self-attack clear skill is usually enough to finish off the thing that's causing the problem. I'm sure I'm going to continue to change the build and continue to iterate on it. The original POB was just a guideline, and while I won't have a full guide for the leveling experience, you are free to watch the VOD, it's about 10 hours long, you're free to skip around and look at things. It was very slow from about Act 3 to Act 5 because I was a little stubborn and I was leveling on a 3-link. I should have definitely not been doing that. I should have taken the time to do the library quest and gotten my efficacy, which would have been a 4th-link that I could have used. But I was stubborn and I didn't, so I just suffered through it. By the time I got to Act 6, swapped to the dual 4-links, I was blazing through the content. And speaking of content, how is Expedition? Expedition itself is a league mechanic that you can very easily do during the story. First of all, I would say it's quite easy. Second of all, it's not very punishing. If you die, the worst case is you die. You can just physically run away from the mobs and just not go back to the area of the expedition as long as you didn't put it directly in your own way. And it's a good way to get rewards. Like always, if you do the league mechanic early on, you have a very good chance of getting low-level uniques, some of which are very valuable, like Tabula Rasa, Goldrim, Wanderlust, and more. In this case, Quill Rain even. So I would recommend it at low levels. I also tried running it in the quarry a bit, and while I'm sure it probably is worth it, I got bored after three runs, because running it in the quarry just felt incredibly tedious, probably because I burned myself out on quarry runs in Harvest. If you like running something and running about five feet to a spot doing a mechanic and running back there every few seconds, go for it. 
Of the three NPCs, or four NPCs, I guess, one of them just gives you currencies for the other three, their trading options and all that. Overall, I have some mixed feelings here. The gambler is not great. I feel like she's mostly a waste of time. I do like her personality. The characterization is well done. But oftentimes when I was exchanging items and just getting blues, I thought, well, why am I even doing this? Why don't I just ignore her and use the chest for the rewards where they are and move on? The dealer is fine. It reminds me of getting the loot from really any other league. You get some bad items, you get some good items, you'll get some nice bases and some well-rolled things that can sell for money. It's worth checking his stock, it's worth refreshing his stock. There's nothing special here. My favorite is by far the haggler. I figured out that he seems to like accepting about 55% of his base price, sometimes a little lower, sometimes a little higher, depending on the item. He has some really nice stuff. I've gotten a bunch of breach splinters. I've gotten stacks of stacked decks, stacks of currency, all sorts of awesome things. I am always excited to see him, and I'm always excited to refresh his wares. During the story, he can give you several chaos orbs, so he's very much worth your time to do. He is by far the best of the three so far. I'll see if his changes at higher levels. I could very much see getting well-rolled bases from the dealer and being excited about that, getting potentially influenced items or maybe even something like a really good ward piece. Some people are probably going to love the gambler because they're going to want to try to roll that headhunter. Personally, I'd rather just buy the headhunter if I want a headhunter. I'd rather not have to gamble for it. So my overall thoughts on Expedition as a leak mechanic is it's great to do it while leveling. It doesn't feel overly punishing. It could be that it feels a little bit on the easy side for me. That could also be because my build is a lot stronger than the average. I certainly don't mind it. I certainly do it in every map. I'm not feeling like, oh, I should probably skip this, or oh, this is really boring the way I was with something like Blight even early on. And the rewards overall do feel worth it, minus from the Gambler. But even if the Gambler doesn't give you anything good, as long as you read the mods, and uh, yeah, reading mods is very important here because I do chaos damage and there are straight immunities. That part I'm not as much of a fan of because it's just kind of a hard no fuck you. You can't do this thing, which is very rare in Path of Exile and feels a bit jarring and out of place. Lastly, I wanted to touch a little bit on the changes to support gems and flasks. Support gems feel fine so far on both a four link and a five link. Toxic Rain does Toxic Rain things. Again, I was intentionally using Ballistas to get around having to use largely nerfed gems. And in this regard, that's been successful. I don't know how it feels for skills that do use a lot of the more heavily nerfed gems. Flasks overall feel fine. I'm running into some troubles where I spam them more than I should. That's because while I was playing, I was always used to kind of doing this, where I'd roll my fingers across my keys and hit all of my flasks at once. This is a very bad habit that is very ingrained in both me and a lot of veteran PoE players. In terms of flasks overall, right now I feel like I'm wrong, it's not that the game's wrong, I'm going to do my best to learn and adapt. I'm very much looking forward to not having to spam them. My only concern is Corrupting Blood specifically. Before you have a Corrupting Blood Jewel, it looks very, very awkward. I'm probably just going to prioritize buying one. I'm in softcore trade. It's not a big deal for me. For anyone who's in SSF or in hardcore, I'm not sure if it's a great solution to be immune for one second when you could take more than one second to kill the thing and then all of a sudden you instantly go back to 10 stacks, and if you're out of flask charges because you've been fighting a fairly tanky rare monster while you're under geared, you could die. One second feels a bit too punishing. I think it probably needs to be raised to three. I may have issues with curses later on, but for the time being at least, it hasn't been too bad. So what about you? How did your league start go? Is your build a success, or are you re-rolling already? As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. A special thanks to my YouTube channel members and patrons, whose generous support keeps me from needing to accept sketchy mobile game sponsorships. If you want the best way to keep up with my video releases and live streams, or maybe just hang out and chat with a bunch of like-minded people, be sure to join the Discord. You can find all these links down in the description below. Thank you again, and I hope you have a great day.